Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Les Miserables, or Les Mis for short. This movie is directed by Tom Hooper, who previously directed The King's Speech. This movie stars Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, and Anne Hathaway, with Amanda Seyfried and Eddie Redmayne. So, when the trailer for this movie came out, and I saw the cast, I was like, that's going to be pretty good. So I decided to see it for that. But then I found out who's directing it, and I learned my lesson two years ago from Tom Hooper with his movie The King's Speech, where when that movie came out, it was a movie I put off to the side. I was like, I'll hold off on seeing it. And then after seeing it, I was like, oh, why did I wait? So, I saw Les Mis. And let me tell you guys, this movie was amazing. This movie was wonderful. After I saw the movie, I was like, oh my gosh. I think it changed my life. <laughs> I had been that haunted from a movie since Rec Room for a Dream. You know, I was just waiting for people to ask me, hey Matt, how was that movie? Or, hey Matt, what's a good movie to see? Because... I had to pause for a moment and think of the different adjectives I could tell them to convince them to see this movie. And guys, you need to go see this movie. There are going to be men out there saying, oh, well, it's a musical and I'm not really a fan of musicals. This movie has things for both men and women. It's a love story, yes, but it's also about vengeance and redemption. It's got action and violence in it, but it also has a love story in there. And it's even got some humor as well. So, whether you're a fan of musicals or great acting, this movie is definitely worth seeing. Now, if you don't like the whole music portion, there is a movie that came out in 1996 or 1997. It has Liam Neeson, Jeffrey Rush, Uma Thurman, and Claire Danes. It's the same exact story, just one of the characters from the musical is not in it, and there's no singing. The story is simple and it's good, but it's not as powerful as this new version about the singing, there is a lot of singing in this movie. It's almost nothing but. It's like 95% singing, where they would sing a line, then they would pause and say, come over here. Then they would start singing again. So there's a lot of it. Now, <clears throat> as far as the acting goes, there's acting in this movie, but it's not as apparent as the singing, because when they're singing, they have to display their emotions in their mannerisms, in their body language, in their facial features. And though it does get the job done, the singing is where this movie's at. Start off with Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman did a good job as the leading role. Though he couldn't hit all the high notes, which is a complaint that some people have, that doesn't bother you. If you don't realize that in the movie, then it won't take away from the movie whatsoever. Uh, Russell Crowe, as the villain, he also did a good job as the bad guy. He's a good actor. Though he did seem kind of monotone in this movie, it was acceptable. Now, the person that just blew me away in this movie was Anne Hathaway. Wow, Anne Hathaway. She has a couple little singing parts and only real one solo song, but her performance in that one song, it's the song from the trailer, but there's a lot more to it. So powerful. I mean, the thing I love about this movie is that these characters and the actors, they sing on camera. You know, they're not lip-syncing to something they sang earlier. They're actually singing on camera, and their mics were erased digitally. So when she starts hyperventilating and starts crying and gets angry, you can hear it all in her voice. And I love that. I love that about her performance and Eddie Raidman's and um, Samantha Barks and Hugh Jackman. Pretty much everybody except Russell Crowe. You could tell the emotion and all the stress and all the anger and all the hardships and everything in their voice. And that just made this movie so emotional and powerful. There were a couple minor characters that actually really stood out to me. One of them being Eddie Redmayne, who's the love interest of Cosette, played by Amanda Seyfried. I never really cared for him as an actor, but after seeing this movie, I was like, whoa, he's good. He's really good. Also, a newcomer to this movie, Samantha Barks, who plays the third wheel in the love triangle. She really stood out to me. She was like Jennifer Hudson in Dreamgirls. So I was like, wow, I'm going to start paying attention to her a lot more because she's really good. Um, also, the few minor characters that were um, teaming with Maris, part of the French Revolution, the young guy that looks like T.J. Miller, and all of them, they did good jobs as well. And I'm glad that the humor in this movie came from Sasha Barra Cohen, who teamed up with uh, Helena Bonham Carter as the innkeeper and his wife. They brought some good and welcomed comedy to this movie. So, not only was the acting good, the singing was just amazingly brilliant. I also liked the set design. A lot of the times when they would sing, they would sing in environments or atmospheres that, yeah, they looked like stage plays, 
but they really helped amplify the emotion and everything in this movie. Also, with Tom Hooper being in charge of directing, he did a lot of his thing where he would either do a close-up of someone's face, or he would do one of those shots where somebody would be on screen, but they wouldn't necessarily be in the middle. They would either be off to the side, or they'd be down in the corner. Something I really also liked is when the actors would sing their songs, I loved how they were in locations that helped amplify and helped set the mood and the tone for their song. You had, for example, uh, Hugh Jackman in this candle-lit room where the only thing the candles lit was his face and his tears and everything. You had Anne Hathaway in this deserted, abandoned ship with <clears throat> all these dark shadows and this little ray of light coming through. I loved how you had the scene where Hugh Jackman and Cosette are escaping from Javert, and they're in these dark, narrow alleyways. It was like the songs and the emotions and the mood were reflected in the location, so that was awesome. So, enough bragging about this movie. Um, from rating a 1 to a 5, if you can't tell already, Les Mis is getting a 5 out of 5. This is a movie that I would not only recommend, but I'm also going to buy it when it comes out on DVD, and I'm definitely going to pick up the soundtrack. So I definitely recommend this movie. Like I said, if you're not a fan of the musicals, check out the 96 version with Liam Neeson. Again, it's a good movie, but this movie was just so powerful. Actually, go see it. After this review is over, go see Les Mis. Till next time, guys. See ya.